Hey yo, this is Dash, and I'm coming to you from my kitchen today. Normally, I start the videos out at one of the grills or one of the smokers, but you guys have seen me use Tracy the Trigger a lot. So I'm not going to bore you with me getting the, the trigger started by turning the dial and flipping the switch. You've seen that already. But what you haven't seen me do is cook St. Louis style spare ribs. Yeah, I've never, never have I ever cooked St. Louis spare ribs. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna simply salt or simply season these with salt, pepper, and garlic. Some leftover from the beef ribs I did a few weeks ago. And what's gonna be different about today's video, I'm gonna be wrapping these in pink butcher paper, brown butcher paper, white butcher paper, and then aluminum foil, or I might leave the other the other piece naked. But the reason I'm, go I'm gonna do that is because the spares are so evenly and uniformly wide. They're not like baby bags where there's the thick end and there's a thin end. And the whole spare ribs, they're just a little unruly. I'm gonna get these, cut them in half, season them all the same way, smoke them all the same way, and then when it comes for me to wrap them up, I'm gonna wrap one in brown butcher paper, one in pink butcher paper, one in white butcher paper, and then the other one, I'm undecided. We're gonna kinda see how that goes once we get there. But, spare ribs, <sighs> never done them before. Wish me luck. Hey yo, this is Dash. Get ready. All right, guys. So you guys are going to watch me struggle along with this. We're all going to do this together. All right. So now, I am not really going to trim much off of these ribs. There is this little flat here. I am gonna, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get it off because it's it's there. Now, one of these ribs, it seems like they, the silver skin, the membrane has already been removed. The other, this one, does not have that taken off. So what I'm gonna do, let me grab a paper towel because if anything, I learned from the spare ribs, the membrane on these is a lot harder to deal with than the membrane on the baby bags. The mem membrane on the baby bags I can simply get my hand underneath of it, my fingers, and pull it off. That is not the case with these at all. Let me get a paper towel. Now my paper towel, I'm gonna rip it in half so that I have two pieces to, to begin with. Now I'm gonna get a knife. Most people tell you to use a spoon. I didn't bring a spoon over here with me. And these ribs are actually pretty freaking cold. So I'm just gonna get a knife in here, get it started. Now that I have it started, I'm gonna come back with my paper towel and we're gonna pull up and off the membrane. Now this is not gonna be an easy process. Uh, if you want any advice from me, try to find some ribs that already have the membrane taken off, if at all possible. But this is why some people leave it on, I guess. But we're gonna struggle and get this off today. All right, there we go. And of course, it's not coming off in one fell swoop. Why would it make this easy on me? <laughs> Whatever. Come on. All right. So now that we've gone ahead and gotten the membrane off of the ribs, what I'm gonna do is get these ribs cut in half. Now again, the reason I'm gonna cut, get these cut in half is so that I have four different portions so that I can try the four different types or three different types of butcher paper 
And then I'm not sure again if I'm going to just do aluminum foil or if I'm not going to wrap the metal. So at this point, I'm going to get these cut in half and we're just going to cut right in the middle. All right. There's our first two portions. And we're going to cut our second two portions. Quick pro tip, if you have to touch something with a dirty hand, use a paper towel. So I'm putting the oil on pretty thick and I'm going to make sure we get all sides this time. When I did the beef ribs, I didn't worry about the bottom. I wanted to keep that membrane on the bottom of those ribs in order to help keep things together. Now I'm going to mix this up. And this is again, what's left of the salt, pepper and garlic from when I did the Texas rib. And I'm primarily gonna work or worry about the tops and the bottoms of these ribs. I'm not gonna worry too, too much about the sides just because they're rather thin. You're gonna see I'm patting the salt and pepper and garlic in. Just trying to put a nice even coat on these guys. to the end here. There's way more garlic down at the bottom than there is salt and pepper. So we're gonna get the last of it. Last of it. All right. So now usually I don't flip once I have my whatever it is I have seasoned, I always make sure that the last thing that I season is gonna be my presentation side so that the seasonings don't fall off. Tracy is already ready. Tracy is my uh, Traeger Pro 22 in case you did not know. I'm gonna go ahead and get these out on Tracy and well actually, I'll see you guys out at Tracy in a moment. All right. So as promised, I'm out here with the spares, St. Louis spares, and Tracy. So let me go ahead and get Tracy opened up, and I'm gonna get the ribs put inside. All right, now with my ribs, I have a few different, um, there are a few different sizes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the smaller ribs in the middle, and the bigger ribs on the outside. Now we're just gonna get these situated and how I wanted them in here this way because the way the heat and smoke or the, the way the, the smoke comes on this is from this edge and these edges up around. So that's why I'm gonna put them more in the middle. I'm not sure, I'm kind of debating at this point whether I'll turn them or put them this way. I don't know whether or not this will work better. This creates 
creates a little more separation between them. I think we're gonna roll with that way. All right, so I have my ribs in Tracy and I'm gonna just go ahead and leave these guys alone I'll probably leave them alone for maybe an hour, hour and a half, and then I'll come back out here and I'm just going to try and I'm going to rotate them around so that the outside edges that are getting the majority of the heat uh, from inside of Tracy will have a chance to get the inside portions to get that same amount of heat. So again, we're just going to rotate them. Again, we're probably going to rotate them 180 degrees, just like I did those beef ribs. So I'll see you guys in an hour and a half. All right. So I'm back out at Tracy and before I go ahead and get this opened up, there's something I realized that I totally forgot just as I was getting ready to come back out here. Oh, and those of you guys who comment on the light. <laughs> so in case you can't tell, I'm on the shaded side of my house. It's enough light for, well, it's enough light for me to film, but it's not enough light to keep that light on because of the sensor. So what happens is, the sensor turns the light on, the light turns the sensor off, and then we get the blinking light as it is. So those of you guys who have commented, leave a funny comment as to what the light is saying in Morse code. All right, so now, again, back to these ribs. I totally forgot something in these ribs that I normally never do. What I forgot this time was water. I forgot the water pan. Totally forgot the water pan was so interested, so worried, and it was frankly early in the morning. So I forgot the water pan, so I don't have a water pan in these ribs, and I'm paying for it because they look a little dried out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mist these down, and normally I don't mist anything, I don't usually add moisture on top because I have enough moisture in the cooker already. But I'm gonna get a sprayer, I'm gonna spray them down with just some water, then I'm gonna add a water pan to these ribs so they can finish out doing a little better. All right, so let me show you these guys. So they're not looking bad at all. I have an a Amazon link to the sprayer down below. Now I'm gonna use a wide stream and I'm not trying to get them so wet that I'm rinsing the seasonings off, but I do wanna add some moisture just to rehydrate these things. Now I'm gonna get them turned around and we're gonna move them around a little bit. Add my water pan that I forgot the first time. Unfortunately, get that kind of in the corner. that'll work out again the water pan takes up some, uh, a decent amount of room what I would like to do is see if I get in some some pans that are a little smaller and maybe I can put one in each corner or something like that so that'll help out in introducing moisture but won't take up so much room but we're gonna leave these go for about another hour and then I'll check them again to see how they're doing but they have a decent color on them already they have a decent color and they're looking pretty good I'm gonna spray them And again, I'm not trying to spray so much that I'm rinsing the seasoning off because if I were, I could definitely rinse the season off, but I, I, I just want to introduce some moisture back to the surface and get some moisture inside of there to help while uh, the water pan is coming up to temperature. Well, bottom, baby. 
<laughs> Thank you guys again as always for watching. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you like what you saw today, if you learned something, please leave me a comment and a thumbs up down below. Don't forget to turn that notification bell on so you can be notified whenever one of these videos goes live. Speaking of live, I go live every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. Two hours. First hour, we talk about barbecue and or something barbecue business related. Second hour, we kind of shoot the breeze, talk to amongst friends. Make sure you bring a, a, a cool refreshment with you. Anyway, thanks again as always for watching. I'll see you next time.